introduce you to my subject here in just a few minutes, but I really feel compelled of the Holy Ghost this morning to mind the Lord. Amen. And I know that, that you will grant that liberty. Uh, my deal is I pray that you would just tune in. My wife was going to be here. She got up to uh, get ready this morning and be here, and then situations rose, sickness in the home with her taking care of her sister, and she couldn't be here. She did text me just a minute ago. Uh, you might have seen me over there texting. She was saying, I'm praying for you, and I'm thankful for that. And if you uh, believe in prayer, I do need you to pray right now that God is touching my body. I've had some issues with my health and some things going on, and I have no idea what it is. And I don't mean to be mean. I, some things I don't even want to know. How about that? I went to the doctor one time, and they just kept on and kept on and kept on about the BMI thing. And, you know, and the, you understand about that, the body mass index. And they just kept saying, you're obese. You're obese. You're, and I said, look, I can do something about losing weight. You can't do anything about being ugly. <laughs> Get off of that thing with me being fat. Really? Seriously, right now, but uh, whatever it is, just pray God touching my body uh, today. There is something that just goes on with me every now and then, and, and uh, in Jesus' name, how many believe God's the healer? Yeah. Amen. So here we are today in Jesus' name. How many is expecting great things right now? Yeah. Let me just preach to you. I'm going to give you my subject, and and we'll go some direction here in a minute with some scripture. But but hold on, I want to preach for a while this morning on this subject. The prescription for 2019. Well, here we go. Turn to your neighbor and say that. The prescription for 2019. And I think you'll find out some things here uh, in just a few minutes. Here we are on the first Sunday of the new year. We have officially closed the door on 2018 and are looking for what God has in store for us this year. It goes without saying that we are faced with many challenges, many opportunities. and What a great time to be living for God. Let me just say that again. What a great time to be living for God right now. Well, you're not very, come on somebody. Let me say that with some, what a great time to be living for God right now. I could shine a little bit of light on that for you, and, 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 and you'll get this right here. The government right now is in shutdown mode, partial. But the church is alive and well. I've come here today to tell you that my God is not in shutdown mode. Well, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. My wife was getting ready to do something just the other day and apply for something and do some stuff. And they told her, they said, you can't do that right now because the government is in shutdown mode. I've come to the Pentecostals of Smyrna today and tell you that the God that I serve is not shut down. Let me go a step further and tell you he's not going to shut down. In fact, the matter of the Word of God says this. He said, I will work, but who will let me? Oh, me. How many here today wants God to work in your life, work in your church, work in your family, work on your job? Oh, boy. See, I could get a, I ain't here to stir up any of that today, but I think that's funny. That's just me personally. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is not shut down. Tell him he's not going to shut down. Come on. That makes me feel good to know I don't care what the government does. I, doesn't, I don't care what the state does. I, doesn't, I don't care what any. Oh, hey, my source, it comes from God. My provision and your provision is in God. Somebody needs to hear that today. When Abraham made his way up that mountain, he found out Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is my provider. Is anybody hearing me today? There are many challenges and many things that we face. 
But can I tell you today, what an opportunity for the church to step up and be the church. Not just go to church. Turn to your neighbor and say, be the church. Somebody needs to hear that today. So we got some prescriptions here we're going to deal with. But I feel that is very, very, very important. There are people that we come in contact with every day. We work with them. We live by them. We shop with them. Whatever the case is, they're searching for answers. They're looking for help in their marriages. They're looking for help in their finances. Direction in that. They're looking for help with their children. They've tried marriage counselors. They've tried financial advisors, and it's failed them. They have failed in their attempts to find peace that they're searching for to calm the chaos that's in their lives. Can I tell you what an opportunity that we have as the church in this hour? Well, I feel a little bit of weariness here today. I feel a little bit of confusion here today. There is a reason why I look across this room today and I see tears streaming down people's cheeks. I see people connecting with God. And I see people in this room who just healed. And that's good. That's good. But you're here because you're searching. You're here because there's something that you're longing for. There's something that you desire. (laughs) An old quote. I was talking to Brother Little a few minutes ago. I got a quote from one of our old elders. It's long gone. It's gone on to be with the Lord. But he made the statement. He said this. It's been said that in times like these, there's always been times like these. Come on, somebody. Nothing, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. We just kind of have maybe coined it a little bit different. But I've come today to preach to us. There's a prescription that God has given us for this new year. That, uh, that is nothing different really from last year or the year before. Sometimes it just needs uh, to be renewed uh, in our thinking uh, and in our mind. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, in uh, the Acts chapter 5, and I'm kind of just skipping to a verse of Scripture here to, to, to get us on the same page. The Bible tells us in the last verse of 5 and 42 of the book of Acts, the Bible said that they were daily in the temple and in every house. Say church and house. You can go. I, I'm not going to take you there, but you can go to Acts 20, 20. Anybody know what 2020 is? Perfect vision. Acts 20, 20 is good, but it's, it kind of reiterates right here. Everyone say the synagogue, temple, house, church, and house. And then it goes on and says there in that verse of Scripture, and they cease not to teach and preach Jesus. Can I tell you, right out of the shoot today, one of the first things that is the prescription of 2019, and I need somebody to holler this at me. Say, preach. Preach. Say, preach. Preach. We don't need some motivational speaker. We don't need somebody reading to us cute stories. We don't need somebody telling us a good story out of a history book. We need a man of God to mount the pulpit and preach. Oh, come on, somebody, and say preach. preach. we got too many positive teachers today and motivational speakers. But where is the man of God? You ought to be thankful that you've got a pastor that will preach the word of God. There's a reason for that. Preaching brings deliverance. Preaching brings healing. Preaching brings a move of God. That's why. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Everyone say preach. That's what we need. I, you know, I was reading this this week. The Bible talks about that. When Jonah was called by God to go to preach to the Nineveh, you know what Jonah did. He got up and paid his fare and, he was going down to Joppa to 
when you leave the will of God, the only place you can do is go down. I want to say it went down to Joppa. Down to Tiff. Down, down, down. But now we want to have the preacher preach things politically correct. And we wonder why we have lukewarm, bound people still sitting in our pews simply because we have not challenged the spirit and the things that's incarcerated them. Preaching, bring, and you know what the Bible says? But I did read it. The Bible said that when Jonah had finally, you know, went, he did all the, he got swallowed up with the fish and the whole bit, but he, he got stood out there on the land. The Bible has a better word than I do. <laughs> the Bible said when the Lord came unto him the second time saying, you go preach. And here's what the word of God says. You go preach into that city the preaching that I bid you. Everyone say that with me. The preaching I bid you. Don't get up and preach something that you want to preach. Don't get up and preach what somebody's preaching down the street. Don't get up and preach what somebody's preaching. Hey, you get up and you go into that town and you preach to them the very word that I give you. Why is that important? Because when Jonah went to that town and he preached the message that God sent him to preach, it brought deliverance to the whole city. Well, I ain't really come here to just nail that down, but here I am. Could it be that the reason why some people remain in their situation and in their circumstance, could it be that the preaching that's going forth is not the preaching that he bids? Well, I appreciate all that help right there. Made me feel really good. Huh? Because, you see... Just me getting up here and preaching, and you patting me on the back is not what I'm here for. That's not why I'm here. I'm on a mission. Because while I'm standing here, I see sadness. I see emptiness. I see brokenness. I see people that are bound and in prison. And what the motivational thing for me is, is while I'm preaching, that God would bid me something to say that would bring you out of your prison, that would bring you out of your sadness, that would bring you out of the situation that's got you bound. Oh, yes. So everyone holler at me, preach. There is something else. You see, there's a little little story there in the book of Acts chapter 4. Let's just read that in Acts 4 and 7. Read down through there. Let me just move ahead here in Acts 4, verse 7. Beginning there at verse 7, it said, When they had set them in the midst, they asked him, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, you rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of good deeds which is done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, perceived they were unlearned and ignorant, they, mar- they marveled and took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. Beholding the man that was, which was healed standing with him, they could say nothing against it. Should I just take a pause right there and tell you that could it be that God wants to do something so amazing in your world that the people cannot deny it? And not only today, everyone say this year. I got a lot of preaching and little time. But let's read on right here. What do these men, verse 16, what shall we do to these men? For indeed a notable miracle has been done by them to manifest to them all that dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man. Everyone say, in his name. They called them, commanded them not to speak, but set among our troops in the name of Jesus. And then they read to them the text that we knew today. They were daily in the temple and in every house, and they ceased not from 
future. Now, so when they found out the reason why that man had been healed, they did a little search, and they found out why that man had been healed. Anybody know why? The Bible said it's because of the name. By what power or by what name? And when they discovered that little one, those people said to him, Look, we don't care for you preaching. We don't care for you teaching. Just don't do it anymore. I tell you, our government has just hit the place where they're trying to dictate to us what we do, how we do, when we do, and everything. Now, we're, we're blessed in America because we're not like some of the other communist countries where they try to keep a big hand on what's going on. But let me just tell you something. Even what we classify the good old U.S. of A. and preaching the name of Jesus. It's amazing how politically correct we've become. Well, we pray now in Christ's name. And, and it just bled over into the season that we went through. And I don't care what your stance is. It doesn't matter. But it, it people people will come up to you and say, Happy Holidays and this and that. And my deal is, no, it's Merry Christmas. No, whatever, you're trying to leave all these things out. But the, but when they found out that it was the name, they said, you know what, we have found out that it's about that name, and we don't want you preaching or teaching anymore in that name. Yeah. I don't know how many of you pay attention, but it was some years ago. They had that little thing that came out. They felt like they had found a bomb. I was either driving down the road or something. But it was kind of amazing. And they felt like they had found the bones of Jesus and they're going through the name. The journalist is going through the name page on this. And finally, one of the other journalists came out. I believe it was on Fox News. He just said, he said, I just have a question to ask you. Why is everybody always picking on Jesus? Now think about that. Why don't they pick on Muhammad? Why don't they pick on Buddha? Why don't they pick on all these other false gods? Why, why, you, you know, when you hear the news, the one that's getting the biggest kick is Jesus. Well, you know, we don't want Jesus being preached. and We don't want Jesus being talked about in our schools. and We don't want Jesus here. And the world has kind of found out that there's a secret to all of this stuff that's going on. I said, why is everybody picking? And that's when I really learned to follow him. Because I wanted to get a hold of that, that person, and I wanted to call in on that talk show and say, I got the answer. I have the answer. I can tell you why they're picking on Jesus and not these other quote-unquote gods. And the reason why they pick on Jesus is because Jesus is the only one that can deliver. Jesus is the only one that can set free Jesus is the only one that can heal. Jesus is the only one that can save. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name given among men whereby you must be saved. So the prescription, everyone said the prescription. Is preach. Everyone holler at me. Preach. And then say, preach Jesus. That's for, now look, I don't want to have to qualify all of this. That really was the prescription for last year. But if somehow we forgot, it's the same for this year. If he healed last year, he heals this year. If he saved last year, he saves this year. If he delivered last year, he delivers this year. Come on, somebody. It's the same thing. Nothing really has changed. <laughs> and I feel like everyone's saying, Jesus, what about that? In the name of Jesus, to set you free. In the name of Jesus, there's glorious victory 
over sin, disease, and sickness and power to walk in liberty through faith in his wonderful name. Everyone say name. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. You see, the adversary doesn't care that we assembled here today. He doesn't care that we sing songs. He doesn't care that we receive an offering. What he wants us to do is keep the name of Jesus silent. Be like every other church. Be like every other gathering. Uh, there is something different. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, Jesus. So the order, the order of the day is preach. Say preach. Say preach Jesus. And then we'll go to Acts chapter 12 and verse 13. The Bible tells us near about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to divert certain of the church, which did acquaint the brother of John with his sin. Because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, put him in prison, delivered him to four quarterings of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. You know the story. If you don't, the Bible will tell you what happened. They began to pray, and Peter was there locked up in prison. And it wasn't long, so while he was behind bars, they couldn't get behind walls they couldn't get to. All of a sudden, an angel came into the very cell where he was at and smote him on the side and said, get up, Peter, put your shoes on, we're going. Now, listen, now we preach a lot of stuff in here. That guy should have stayed down in the basement. Peter gets up and he heads out of the prison. They got, they got, they got guards around guards. church, everyone say the church is praying say it with some unction say the church is praying I've come here today to ask us the question, in the midst of all the chaos that we're experiencing and the chaos that we're going through and people are saying well what can we do, what do we need to do where is an old fashioned prayer meeting at I'm not talking about where you get together and you pray the little prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Come on, I'm talking about some people that really know how to get a hold of God. That prays like we, we did. That we did the reading over there in the book of Acts. The Bible said when they prayed the place where they were assembled, everyone said was shaken. What would happen in here today with all the people that are bound? And all the situations that's beyond our control. Uh, we're churchgoers here today. Okay. But what would happen right now if this whole building started shaking? Hey, Brother Dallas, I've been in prayer meetings with you. I've seen one of the Del Air Sisters. Seriously, people. What would happen right now if this place started shaking? Now, that means getting the cars and leaving. The rest of us are just hanging around and waiting. The shaking that would take place in here that would literally set every man free. Sickness, disease, Fear, whatever it is. You don't say prayer. See, I had a guy tell me this. I preached this here once in another church. I had a guy tell me this. The job I had, I had sickness going on in my body. He knew he realized something was messed up there. He said, man, that's going on. I told him. And he said, I'm going to pray for you. Well, prayer? I don't know. I really didn't care. He prayed for me. I was cool with it. Not praying to get holy though. Not about you. I know you're not praying. But he, a couple days later, he seen me, and the particular situation I had with going on my kidney stone. A couple of about a day after the attack, he 
So he sees a couple days later. He says, hey, can you pass that guy? How did that get? I said, dude, I passed that son that night or the next night I passed him. And he said to me, this right here, and he just kept right on walking. He says, son, I was just praying for you. You know, we as churchgoers, and I'm using that very, you know, loose right now because the devil goes to church. So if we just like that, we're, there's no difference between us and the devil. You ain't nice. Well, I'm a believer. So is the devil. Well, I quote scripture. So does the devil. Well, and he said to me, it's quite obvious. I wonder if us in this room, how many of us just really believe when, that God really does answer prayer? He really does answer prayer. When people join together with their faith, individually and corporately, and the church begins to pray, God opens doors that no man can open. He shuts doors that no man can shut. And I'm telling you, prayer. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's obvious prayer works. Yeah. The church needs the prescription 19 is, everyone say preach. Preach Jesus. Preach the bread. Because it's quite obvious that prayer, it works. It works. It brings healing. It brings deliverance. It brings a move of God in our local city. You know what? The adversary would love for us to gather together and tell stories, gather together and tell jokes. But I'm going to tell you right now, the church that has prayer on its mind and begins to reach out to prayer to Almighty God, I'm telling you, we have yet to see. Huh? It's amazing. Even with no suspension and the government shutdown, how much? Come on, church. Could it be the closer that we get to the coming of God that our faith is going to be tried to the very core of things that we trust and believe in, put our faith and our hope in? Huh? And that it's stripped from us when all we have is God. question is, I wonder how many of us can, myself included, literally can say, okay, God, I don't know about the water holes, have no clue, but my faith is in you. that old. And I'm thinking, I can't serve Jesus like that. And then I've got a little, I told you, I've got a cousin that just got out of prison about two years ago. And for eight years, he didn't have a cell phone. It was a cell. saying all of that to say this the conveniences that we fold ourselves in brother Stubbs going to step up for a little bit brother Sherman last year and one of the things that you and your family went through last year we 
You know what? The rug can be snatched right from under all of us so quick. But all we have is God. That's all we need. That's that's all we need. Well, I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, you can. You can do it. You can be put in a situation where there's some things that we really don't need. But there is one thing I do need, and that's God. I need God. And you need God. I can survive without a phone, but I can't survive without God. I can survive without a new car, but I can't survive without God. I can survive without a new iPad, but I can't survive without God. So I hurry to a close. Listen to me. You know it's amazing the pressure that the church feels a lot of times to keep up with us. Now, listen, hang on. I'm just about done, but listen. With other churches, things are, we want to be cutting edge. 2019. And you read about the church in the book of Acts. Everyone say about 120. Then they go to 3,000. It says it there in the book of Acts. And then it says 5,000. Everyone say addition and multiplication. And so we, the church, find ourselves at this very moment. What do we do? Acts chapter 2. says here with many other words which we will testify unto but listen to me I can, I'm telling you to repent and be baptized with every man in the name of Jesus Christ but in verse 41 it says then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls everyone say 3,000 souls see the church is about growth everyone say growth say addition and the Bible tells us and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking Fear came upon every soul. Huh. Fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Sold their possessions, goods, parted to all men as, as every man had need. And they continuing daily. Everyone say continuing. And so my message to the Pentecostals and so many others is this. What are we going to do in 2019? We're going to continue preaching. We're going to continue preaching in the hearing. We're going to keep preaching prayer. Why? Because it takes us from 120 to 3,000 to 5,000. And lives are changed and people are delivered simply because the church, hear me in the Holy Ghost, continues to be the church. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's profound. Really? God spoke it to me just over a week ago. Everyone say with me, they continued in. That don't mean we're delivered. We still going to preach. We still going to preach Jesus. We still going to pray. We still going to teach home Bible studies. We still going to unlock the door, let people in. We're just going to continue in what we have been doing. Because we continue in that, people are still going to be delivered. People are still going to be healed. People are still going to find deliverance in their life. Praise His name. In Jesus' name. Listen to me this morning. Come on, somebody. What 
turn to your neighbor and say, let's continue. Say, let's continue. You know, there's a few things that we left out. You can preach out of the book of Acts as much as you want. Everyone say fellowship. You see, you and I need each other more than we want to admit sometimes. Really. I worry about that individual that's isolated themselves and act like they don't need the church or need their brothers and sisters. Well, there's been some things happen in my life through some surgeries that I had, some financial difficulties, and some things that really God showed me the value of the church. It meant so much to Jesus that he purchased it. He purchased it. See, some of you might think right now you understand the value of the church. But literally the rug could be snatched out from under your life until you see the value of the church. You see, some of us, if we're not careful, we think it's the building. But Jesus stood there on that hillside one day he ascended and made that prayer. And the angel come back and said, Why stand ye gazing at me? You miss him, you miss him. And the church. Jesus, who was here walking the earth then, he's not now. Only in the form of the church. Everyone say, We. Because in my own, and I'm still battling things even today. I'm trying to stretch my faith so that I can do some things for God. In my flesh, a lot of you would say, you're ignorant. But God showed me during that time. When my money was down, I was was trying to provide for a family of five. This wasn't 50 years ago. This was like four or five years ago. And if you're a keeper of a home, you know what it takes to survive. And I've got it in my file. (laughs) Of everybody that came and made donations to me. And I have in two or three months over five. Paying my bills. Everyone said the church. Don't you see what I'm saying to you today? Don't you see? I don't mean anything by this at all because there's a knife in my life, a man in this life that he had to continue to do certain things. What are we going to do when the government comes in? What are we going to do when the attorney can't help us? What are we going to do when the doctor shakes his head and says, Continuing in. Everyone said the apostles doctrine. doctrine. Say fellowship. Breaking the bread. Unity. Everyone said one accord. Jesus. Miracles. Deliverance. 
deliverance right now. Right now. Right now. I remember standing in the pulpit in the church preaching one day. I was a young boy. I had people come to me when I finished preaching. In an apostolic church to challenge me. Some of you need to tell Jesus that. I suffered in some churches. I said, and it, are you taking medicine? Yeah. I said, well, is it the will of God for you to be sick? You're violating the will of God. Get off your medicine. Is it the will of God for you to be sick? Don't take your medicine. I'm, some of you are looking at me really goofy right now. I'm just giving you an, just an answer that sometimes we say things we don't even believe ourselves. I was preaching, something strange happened to me. I got sick, hardened the vernacular as a dog in the pulpit while I was preaching. It was attacked from hell. It happened to me right before I came up here while I was preaching. That's why I asked you to pray. While I was preaching, preaching faith, spiritual people would say, well, the God I serve, yada, yada, and, and, and I had to watch my attitude. I'm not going to get into the debate with you about the will of God or any of that stuff. I'm just telling you something right now. If thou canst believe, all Everyone say, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. If thou canst believe, and that man looked at Jesus, and he said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. <laughs> so I don't... I, I, you need, if you need God to do something in your life in 2018, these altars are open today. I, I don't even know that we have to kneel, and I'm, I'm not against kneeling, I'm not against that. But why don't you, as a declaration of faith, come and line up across this front today and begin to begin to reach out to God and reach to Him in faith. Hey, if thou canst believe today, all things, all things, 